Let's do it. Right, so I'm just contemplating this target just down here. It's just in the tree line there, 145 yards. Right, part two. So efficiency. Now, this is the key to everything. In order to get the best results, we need to concentrate on being efficient. This involves not wasting energy. To get the best efficiency in long range shooting, we need to use heavyweight ammo at least four or five gram, which is suited for your uh, platform's power that you're shooting. So it's, it's down to, in your country, you might be able to shoot uh, much higher powers and you should be going more for four or eight at least, or fives. Um, whereas if you're in a, you know, say you were in Ireland or Italy and you had a one dual limit, then obviously you wouldn't be using four eight if you're trying to achieve long range shooting. Uh, so matching your ammo to your power. Heavier ammunition retains energy longer and although it will initially involve move slower than light ammo at the same power, it will eventually overtake them further down the firing range. Right, so it's like the hare and the tortoise, that the, uh, the tortoise sets off slower but he'll actually overtake the hare. Uh, further down the track just by keeping going at a more constant speed okay <clears throat> uh, ultimately it will outrange the lighter ammunition unless too heavy for the power available as we were just discussing say a one joule try one joule rifle trying to fire 0 0.48 gram will shoot less distance overall than if it fired a 0 0.30 gram. So everything has an optimum to be most efficient. You want to match your volume to be efficient and reduce air leaks to nil. Use small amounts of PTFE tape on any sealed or hop rubber to minimise chance of leaks. Efficiency also means you should achieve a consistent output which can only aid accuracy. Lastly, as a shooter, be conscious you are efficient and diligent. Slow your rate of fire to allow a more stable hop rubber temperature. And that's an interesting aspect, isn't it? As you shoot over the rubber, it starts to, uh, through friction, get hotter and therefore its consistencies and its properties change. So if you have a slower rate of fire, you'll maybe get a more consistent spin from your hop rubber, depending on what obviously what compound you're using as well. Uh, gather all feedback from a shot before moving on to pre prepare for the next. So take note of every shot, it's all a little piece of learning. All your misses are, are how you learn to hit. Take your time, observe the wind conditions and this way you should find the ammo usage goes down but hopefully your accuracy and effectiveness increases. Being efficient is a mindset and as Hathcock described, you get your own bubble and focus on the task at hand. So it's about just like zoning out of everything else and just concentrating on what you're doing and paying attention to every little last bit of detail that you can. Looking at the field, with the grass in it, tree tops over there, um, feeling the wind on your face, looking at the nearby foliage, working out the direction of the wind, you know, coming, coming directly across here. So there's going to be a slight amount of drift to the right if I'm shooting at this tree line down here um, and, and a bit of a headwind which will affect uh, your shooting as we'd discuss later. So just taking note of everything. Uh, right so other factors that are very minor but just to be informed about them. Coriolis effect right caused by centrifugal force from the earth's spinning movement. So obviously the earth's spinning we're on it. Pellets will always drift to the right in the northern hemisphere. So this is a bit like you know your, um, your uh, when you empty the sink and the, the 
the drain hole with a little whirlpool. If you're in the northern hemisphere it goes one way and if you're in the southern hemisphere it'll go the other way. This is the same. So pellets will always drift to the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. The effects are greater nearer the poles and less at the equator. The effect is minor but mathematically several inches drift at maximum flight times ranges. So it will move all your shots in the northern hemisphere maybe this far over at maximum range. But something to consider. There will always be a little bit of right hand drift just just because of uh, this effect and how long the pellets are in the air for it's nothing to do with distance or anything like that. it's just the fact that it's in the air for so long four seconds plus right and the eat voss effect right unlike the Coriolis effect the eat voss effect is stronger at the equator and less at the poles so it's the other way around when shooting with the rotation of the earth to the east so from here that's this way so i'm shooting more westerly uh, when shooting with the rotation of the earth to the east your pellets will drop less due to the earth's centrifugal force the pellet will drop more if shooting west so i'm shooting west so again that might move my uh, impact down a few inches automatically just from the direction i'm shooting in so it's quite interesting this isn't it uh, again at extreme ranges this will make a few inches difference so yeah consider this at all times you know if you're in the northern hemisphere which you'll always be on <laughs> on game day you'll be in the same uh, hemisphere all your pellets at maximum range will just have that little s slight drift inclination to the right of us you know 140 yards plus uh, right so that's an interesting little little thing that you've probably not considered but there's also the other things you maybe have which is air density right the density of the air depends on the air pressure temperature and humidity so it's a combination of those three things all three factors alter the pellets trajectory air density causes drag on the pellet as it moves so more density more drag slowing it down quicker in denser air yep. air density has a big factor in long range performance on the day due to pellets relatively low weight in order to monopolize on maximum range you should have an advantage on a low pressure day so that's what you're looking for for when you're going for max testing low pressure right so that's density now we'll look at air pressure the air's density is altered by air pressure. It's important that it isn't just altitude that alters air pressure. Indeed, higher altitude areas have on average less dense air. Yet weather changes air pressure significantly at all heights. Therefore, it's key to measure actual air pressure and not just note altitude. So it's a, it's a combination of the weather and the altitude that actually gives you the air pressure. Air pressure has a larger effect on the airsoft pellets than people realise. And this is it. If you're shooting in poor conditions, your pellets will just not be the same. Um, so, it's important you start to study that on your long range airsoft experiments. And this is it. You'll notice when you rock up to an event, I use this. Now, I bought this specifically for all this, it was only a few pounds, seems to be accurate and calibrated from what I can tell comparing it with other devices, and here it's telling me what the air pressure is. So you can see here, here it's doo -doo -doo, 1025 bar, yeah? Uh, this also tells me the temperature, which you can see here is about pretty much crack on 10 degrees sorry six degrees and this one is the air humidity and this is about 62 percent air humidity so these three things 
affect the air density. So I bought this device, this little weather station. You don't have to carry it around with you, it ain't going to change that much on the day. It's when you turn up, you can write that down and use that to compare with, you know, other range days and learn how it affects your shooting um, with the combination of these three factors. So get something like that, it's only a few pounds, under ten pounds. Uh, right, so station pressure. There are pressure at a specific location giving a true reading that includes altitude and weather. Often measured in inches, millimetres of mercury in a barometer, this is the favoured shooting reading as shows actual pressure on the bullet. Then there's barometric pressure, corrected reading as if at sea level, which therefore isn't as useful as you are not firing at sea level. Be aware this exists and avoid using it as it doesn't include changes for altitude. Then temperature. Ambient temperature alters a pellet's performance as warmer air is less dense than cooler air. Therefore, hotter days are better to try and maximise ranges. Your pellets will, will just be going through less dense air when it's, when it's warmer. This can alter performance by several yards and have more effect than you may first realise. It is a, if it's a cold day, expect to aim a little higher. So, look at it that way, expect poorer performance that basically the worse the weather is and but humidity contrary to what you think the higher the humidity the lower the air density therefore in higher humidity a pellet has less drag allowing more range however humidity has less effect on air density than pressure or temperature so out of these three factors on here it's it has the least effect this has the most effect, I believe, the actual air pressure and then the temperature. However, humidity has less effect on air density than pressure or, or temperature. Humidity, however, can have a negative effect on your platform and especially on bio ammo. So this is it. Just because you go, oh, lovely, it's really, uh, really damp, that's, that's going to help. You know, there's, there's less dense air. It isn't going to help your hop and your barrel. Um, so there's a fine line you don't want it to be uh, really high humidity you just want it to not not be a bone dry day uh, right so moving on so these three things the additive effect the changes to air pressure temperature and humidity can all cancel each other out or combine to cause a very low or very high air density watch out you come on over there go on over there go back um, this will alter your pellet's performance to become more specific to certain conditions at extreme ranges. What is achievable one day may not be repeatable the day after due to different conditions and I've experienced exactly that. Be aware all of these factors and try to look them up at your range card online from weather stations or use your own weather gauges like I've just shown you there. To document and study the natural conditions, your own gauges will make you take more notice. And this is true. Be sure to pack this in your shooting bag. And when you get there, you're going to see it. Take it out, note things down. And that's what a lot of this is about, is just noting things down. And then you'll be able to go back and actually put two and two together to, to get the uh, answers to the questions. You know, what makes for better shooting conditions? How much difference does it make? Um, spotting. Right, so we'll just touch on this. The art of gunnery is often in the spotting, not just the shooting, for without an ability to detect what is happening downrange, then the exercise is fruitless and without any feedback or data. Good spotter has more chance of gathering data than the shooter as concentrating solely on the task of observation. So really good to have a spotter. Rather than firing the rifle, sometimes the shooter has to be his own spotter, but this is far from ideal and limits his range of acquiring feedback it feedback of impact locations because often your spot can even be down the range and it can show you exactly where the pellets go video it it's a good way of studying it right the spotter is the one who fills in the data cards in this book so this is it that the shooter just concentrates on the shooting the spotter he's got time to change stands using observation scope whatever he needs to do fill in the book 
um, he may be next to the shooter is often better placed at the target this is one of the advantages of airsoft over other shooting disciplines due to the far safer environment for the spotter so you can go down the range and not fear any kind of injury as long as you've got your goggles on um, long range airsoft shots have been have less kinetic power than at the muzzle take advantage of this by having a spotter at the target whenever possible always out where eye protection for safety so you know that's one way of uh, using um, pairs and here's the other in the military the senior sniper is the spotter as he is less tunnel visioned and less focused on just running the gun the less experienced sniper runs the rifle as he has less to concentrate on and just adjust from the spotter's instructions this way the shooter can concentrate on the fundamentals of shooting and delivering the perfect shot the shooter shouldn't shoot any different at 30 or 130 yards each time he focuses on sight picture stability breathing and trigger control the sniper team needs trust and honesty to succeed this means if a spot gives you more windage as a correction then add it on if you don't and you hit unless you tell him the data collected will be wrong do not shoot with modified adjustments without telling the spotter so he's giving you his indication of where you need to be aiming more if you modify that you need to tell him how you've modified it so when he's doing the notes he's fully aware so there ends part two and um, if you thought it was interesting you know you want to comment uh, ask any questions just put them in the box below thanks for watching